but we're talking hundreds, you know, maybe a couple thousand people just butt cheeks out. Everything you've ever heard about Portland is wrong. Is it? I don't know, let's find out. In this video, we're going to give you seven myths and a bonus at the end. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul and Seth with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Cook Park in Tigard, Oregon. If this is your first time to the channel, living in Oregon, make sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the little bell to get notified when we drop new videos. People reach out to us all the time who are moving to Portland, relocating to the Portland area or other places in Oregon. And if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link below in the description of this video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we'd love to talk to you about your home search. So what are we talking about? <laughs> well, we're gonna talk about some myths today. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, national misconceptions about Portland. Um, yeah, maybe some of them are kind of true. Maybe some a lot of people are aware of. And there's maybe a few out there that uh, maybe some people aren't, aren't aware of. Yeah, I mean, there's truth to every stereotype for the most part. And, you know, undoubtedly, if you're moving to Oregon, if you're moving to the Portland area, you've been doing some research, you've been looking at what different neighborhoods are like, you know, what Portland is like overall, as far as the culture, things to do, places to eat, things to see, all that good stuff. And so in this video, we're going to try to dispel some of the biggest myths that you probably have already read online. First myth. What's the first one? Uh, Portland is weird. Is Portland weird? Uh, man. Nah. No, not as weird as they say. <laughs> I've been to a lot of places around the country. I mean, you know, especially big cities, you're going to get some stuff that's a little bit quirky, a little bit out there. But I think, you know, to some degree, Portland is especially quirky. And some of the things that you may have seen in like shows like Portlandia, for example, which really kind of perpetuates this myth, um, there may be a, a sliver of truth or a grain of truth to it. But all in all, um, at least from my perspective, you know, Portland's yeah. a, a pretty regular place. I mean, if you want to see weird, go to like a subway in New York. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go to Venice Beach, California. Um, Portland is not going to be able to hold a candle to, to you know, some of those places. So r relatively, it, it's just, n it's really probably not that weird. I think um, people like to kind of latch on, um, you know, to that stereotype because that's kind of our motto as, w as well. And, uh, you know, Portland isn't known for too much. So I think that's maybe one reason people kind of latch on to it. But, you know, day to day, is Portland really weird for like most Portlanders, especially when you're talking about the Tri-County area? I mean, if you're going to see something weird, it's, it's probably going to be in Multnomah County. Um, Washington County, Clackamas County, you're out in the burbs, you just don't see a whole lot. I mean, it's pretty normal, maybe even some might even call it a little bit boring. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people who are moving here, you know, might not be looking to live in the city. Some people want to live in the city, you know, so everybody's looking for something different. And, you know, a, a lot of that stereotype, a lot of kind of, you know, the, the reputation that Portland has for all the weird, quirky little things are going to be closer into downtown. And there's a lot of different neighborhoods kind of surrounding the downtown area, especially in Southeast Portland and Northeast Portland that really fit uh, the, the prototypical, uh, ex exactly what you would think of when you're thinking of living in Portland. But a lot of people are going to be moving out to the suburbs. And like Seth said, Clackamas County, Washington County, there's a lot of just very suburban, very kind of, you know, run of the mill, you know, suburban life that, uh, you know, to some might seem boring to some, it's exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. And I think actually the word that you used actually probably better describes Portland, which is quirky. Sure. Um, there's, there's some parts of Portland that are quirky. It, there's really just not that much that's weird, especially again, if you're comparing to a big city, if you're coming from a big city, like we've met people coming from big cities before, um, Portland isn't that weird at all. It's, it's a lot less weird than a lot of places that uh, people are coming from when, when we're talking about big cities. So it's really not that weird, but uh, it is kind of quirky. And in some areas it's, it's pretty normal and just boring. Portland's a very artsy place, you know, for example, there's a lot of art galleries. There's there's a lot of people who um, maybe kind of don't live the average kind of standard nine to five life. And, and you know, th there's, there's really kind of something for everybody in Portland. I think Portland embraces people who kind of choose to live in their own way. And that's really a big part of what 
brings people to the area. We do have the naked bike ride every year. Are uh, we the only place that has the naked bike ride? I don't know. I feel like other other places probably do too. And if they didn't, I'm sure there's people that would do it. Yeah, I mean, but I've, I've seen it several times, never participated. Um, I've actually, I've never it seen it. It may or may not be on the bucket list, I don't know, but um, I, I've seen it drive by, or you know, ride by uh, a handful of times in my life, and you know, we're talking hundreds, you know, maybe a couple thousand people just butt cheeks out, you know, right, riding their bikes. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that, uh, is just kind of a part of the culture here. Yeah. There's a lot of little things like that. Um, you know, but you're not going to, uh, see a naked bike ride out in Beaverton. You know, you're not going to see a naked bike ride in Lake Oswego yeah. or some of the other suburbs that are right next to Portland. So, you know, if that's what you're into and if that's what you're looking to get into, I'd say even if you live out in the suburbs, hey, take your clothes off and go for a bike ride in the city, whatever, you know. Um, you know, again, I think, you know, Portland overall does tend to be pretty accepting. And, um, you know, just the culture here, uh, you know, and, and the people that uh, Portland attracts, you know, maybe tend to be a little more on the quirky side. Yeah. All right. So what's next on our list? Um, you know, I, I think it, it's it's definitely a myth that Portland is a, a really cheap, affordable place, or that Oregon is a much cheaper place to live than other states in the country. Yeah, um, Portland for 2021 ranked out of large uh, largest cities in the country, 21st. Um, Oregon, the the state as a whole, um, the median being 100, um, Oregon is ranked 130 by um, BestPlaces.net. Um, so that means that um, $100 on average nationally, if you come to Oregon, you'd have to spend $130 to get $100 worth of, you know, whatever, groceries or, 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 you know, home or something like that. So Portland and Oregon in general is a more expensive state. Um, there's more people coming here than leaving here, you know, so that's driving up real estate uh, prices as well. So we have kind of seen that a little bit. Some people maybe... Uh, maybe we kind of get overlooked like so many other things where it's like, hey, Seattle's super expensive, Washington can be expensive, California, everybody knows California is expensive. So maybe kind of just by default, it feels like maybe Oregon isn't as expensive, but compared nationally um, to, to all the other states, uh, it, it, it does actually rank up there as being one of the more expensive places. Yeah, and, and you know, to some degree, this is all relative. So it's, it kind of depends on where you're coming from you know, and, and what you're looking for. As far as the West Coast goes, you know, Portland is the cheapest major city to live on the West Coast. So, you know, if you are coming from San Francisco, Seattle, LA, yeah. San Diego, Portland is gonna be a little more uh, uh, affordable, you know, kind of across the board. It's gonna feel cheap. Uh, but compared to most of the country, you know, Oregon, the Portland metro area, I mean, between housing costs and, you know, just kind of your other standard costs, utilities, food costs, etc., cetera, um, and taxes as well. You know, income taxes do tend to be a little bit higher here. Yeah. Property taxes tend to be a little bit higher than a lot of places around the country. So, you know, it's 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 a little bit of a myth that, that you know, Portland is, you know, cheap or super affordable. Uh, but again, that depends on where you're coming from. All right, next on our list. What do we got? Crime. Crime? Crime. So I, I think there's a little bit of a myth, especially um, the last year or two, that um, there's high crime, especially um, violent crime. Um, and, and Portland really doesn't even come close to ranking nationally for, for violent crime. So I think... Doesn't crack the top 100, actually. Doesn't even crack the top 100, yeah. yeah. Um, there has been maybe a little bit of an uptick uh, in the last few years since the pandemic and some of the social unrest in a, in a few places. Um, you know, and again, if you're moving here, you know, we can kind of show you where those places are and where those places aren't. But overall, compared to all the other major cities, our crime is low here. But you do sometimes hear people saying, hey, it seems like the crime is high in Portland. It seems like there's a lot of unrest. You know, if you're watching the mainstream media and kind of something like the Portland is burning type of stuff, you know, um, yes, in a few places, it was really bad, was burning, went on for a long time probably longer than some of the media even reported, even our local media. Um, but it was pretty concentrated to, to some small areas. So for most Portlanders, you didn't really experience that. Most Portlanders aren't experiencing increased crime or high crime. We have places in Portland that are some of the lowest crime places um, in the country. Yep. Um, so it's definitely kind of a misconception, maybe for some people, that crime is higher here. 
Yeah, you know, especially outside looking in, if you have looked at the media, you know, and the news in the last couple of years, um, you know, a, a lot of people who are moving into the area, you know, that is a question that they ask, like, is Portland safe? And I think that has become a myth about Portland, that Portland is an unsafe place to live. You know, even my grandma in the last couple of years, you know, would say, hey, stay out of downtown. But, you know, I get downtown all the time, as well as, you know, all across the Portland metro area. You know, it, it's it's hard to, to pinpoint, you know, too many places where it genuinely feels unsafe or that there's a super high level of crime. You know, it's just not something that, you know, people who live here really even talk about or think about that much. So um, I would say overall, you know, the, the crime rate, if you look at the statistics, is pretty low on a, in terms of a national average on a per capita basis. And it just feels like a safe place to live. Yeah, I mean, it's always felt safe to me. Lived here my entire life. Never really experienced any places that, that felt unsafe. You know, again, with the exception of the last couple of years, there's been a little bit of an uptick. So there's maybe a few areas where you might watch out. Um, you might not take your kid to, you know, a particular park or something like that. Uh, but those are pro probably pretty few and far between. Again, if we're just looking at the last couple of years, in particular, really just like a two or three month period where there was some rioting and things like that going on, that was confined to a very small area. And if you lived five, eight, 10, you know, 15 miles away in any of the surrounding suburbs, you wouldn't even have known what was going on. So yeah, I think we can dispel that one, say, you know, Portland um, and the Portland metro area is a pretty safe place to live. Next myth. It rains all the time. Yeah, it rains a lot. Yeah, it rains. Um, actually, uh, the most recent study I saw was that uh, uh, Portland got the third most days of rain uh, in the country. But if you look at the volume of rain, it didn't crack the top 15. So, yeah, there's a lot of rainy, you know, gray days. Uh, but is you know, is it is it rain like you know you're you're kind of maybe thinking compared to a place like you're coming from, or compared to just like a torrential downpour? We don't see a ton of that. Yeah, I mean, the weather definitely, like torrential, torrential downpour, like you, you don't really see that here you, like you see in the south. We right. Don't, we don't have that same kind of weather. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if, obviously if you're coming from California, which a lot of people are, um, you're going to experience a lot of rain, but it's just not constantly raining, like, you know, kind of like the myth. Um, even on a rainy day, the sun usually tends to, uh, to get out for a couple hours and uh, it's, it's really not that bad. So definitely the, the rain is kind of overhyped. Yeah, I mean, you know, th there's, there's some pretty bad days. There's some pretty gray, rainy, gloomy days, and sometimes for days on end, um, that does happen in particular in the winter. You know, if, if you're yeah. looking at kind of December through February, you're gonna get a majority, you know, pretty pretty bad weather kind of, you know, by, by anyone's standard. But, you know, a, a lot of the fall and a lot of the spring you know, where the weather is kind of turning, you know, either kind of into or out of summer, um, you're going to get a lot of days where it'll rain, you know, for 30 minutes and just a little trickle and then the sun will come out and then the clouds will come back in and it'll rain a little bit more. So, you know, you're still going to be able to find opportunities to get outside and yeah. do things. And, you know, it's it's not going to be like you're going to want to curl up under a blanket all the time. It's It's not nearly as bad as they say. Yeah, not as bad as they say for sure. Yeah. All right. Next myth. Everybody's outdoorsy. Is everyone outdoorsy? Eh, some of us are. It's a big part of the culture. Yeah. But certainly not a requirement. No, not everybody's outdoorsy. What, what is kind of the, uh, what would you say is the gauge or the, how would you measure whether or not somebody is outdoorsy? Well, I think, I think a lot of people, and this is probably anywhere, a lot of people like to get outside, go on walks, just, you know, just kind of be outside for a while, get some fresh air. And where we live, you know, there's a ton of opportunity to do that. You know, there's great parks, hiking trails, you know, all within the Portland metro area. I mean, we're less than 10 miles from downtown right now, and we're in, I don't know, a, a 50 acre park. There's a river behind us. Um, you know, it's green, it's beautiful. And so I, I think, you know, most people do like to kind of, you know, just get outside, but, you know, outdoorsy. And I think especially somebody moving, you know, to Oregon, to yeah. Portland, you hear about the mountains, you hear about the beach, you know, you hear about fishing and hiking and, and all these things that you can do, which is, you know, again, it's a big part of the culture, but it's not something that, you know, everybody gets into, you know, to that degree necessarily. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah. I think maybe um, maybe hiking is the first step for some people. If uh, if you're not an outdoorsy person, that's maybe what kind of uh, sets it apart. There's people that go outside and just walk and do the walking trails, but then there's actually the hiking. 
you know, where you get a, uh, you know, a permit and actually. So I, th I think that's maybe, um, there's probably a lot of people that don't actually do anything like that other than just getting outside and walking around. There's a lot of people that don't hike here. You know, if I think outdoorsy, I think maybe like a Boulder, Colorado. Sure. That's like, that, I mean, it feels like, and yeah, I could be wrong about that. It feels like everybody there is outdoorsy. Yeah. Um, whereas a lot of people are outdoorsy here, but there's plenty of people that never ever go hiking or don't know anybody that goes hiking or, you know, again, they might, you know, get outside and go for a walk when uh, the sun comes out, which we all, you know, tend to do just because, you know, the rain, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not, the rain's not that bad though. Right. <laughs> but it goes away. It's like, you got to go outside now. You yeah. Soak up that sun. Right. Right. You know, it, if, if you want to get outdoors and, and be a little more extreme and adventurous, I mean, you can get out to the mountains, um, you know, to the east. You can get out to the coastal range uh, and then to the beach, to the west. Um, and then even south, you know, you have uh, like, you know, the Mount Hood National Forest kind of extends south a little bit. You have areas like uh, Silver Falls, um, which is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and even within Portland, there's Forest Park and Mount Tabor and a ton of city parks and parks within different suburbs um, that, again, are huge and, 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 you know, have a lot of things that you can, um, you know, kind of get out and, and engage in. But, um, yeah, I mean. And we probably all know plenty of people that, have, that never do that stuff. Ab absolutely, yeah. <laughs> if, so. if, you're, if you're moving to the Portland area and you think you need to start shopping for hiking boots and, and gear. Go, go and, to REI. Yeah, go to REI or, you know, uh, an outdoor store. I mean. You know, it, it's certainly not a requirement. Yeah. You're going to find a lot of people that are into all kinds of different things, um, and you know, probably you know wouldn't be caught dead. You know, do it. You know, hiking even a couple some miles. Flannel. Wearing some flannel and yeah. Well, there's a lot of banner boots. Yeah, a lot of people. You know, maybe rock the gear a little bit. You know, just uh, as kind of a, you know, for style. Maybe that. Maybe that has. Yeah, you know, that's maybe that's embedded in the culture the a little bit. Yeah, maybe that's. And we can talk about. We'll talk about the hipsters later in the video, but. All right, so next, how about this one? Um, everybody in Portland or Oregon, it's a stoner state. It's a stoner city. A lot of weed here. I th yeah, there probably is a lot of weed here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's we, true. I think weed was legalized, I don't know, eight Wasn't years. Wasn't it Colorado first? Yeah, Colorado was first. I think uh, maybe Vermont. There was a second state, and then I, I think we were the third, maybe fourth. We we were like within you know we were within maybe the top five of states to um, or the first five rather to to legalize weed and you know it seemed like even growing up um, you know maybe there was a little bit of a culture around weed here in Portland I don't know I mean um, certainly none of my friends or anything like that but um, you know now that weed's legalized you know it, there there's like you know weed tourism people come here to check out weed <laughs> shops. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's definitely something that is you know very accessible, um, but I think in terms of you know if we're talking about a myth, um, you know, it, it's not like everybody smokes weed here. It's not like you see it everywhere <laughs> or you smell it everywhere. Yeah. That's not the case at all. Yeah. Well, in, in fact, I mean, some places don't don't have weed shops at all, right? So it's kind of municip it's municipality by municipality. So some towns will uh, allow weed stores and, and some don't. Um, so, so some towns in Portland, you're, you're never even going to see any weed stores. Um, some you'll see them quite frequently. Um, so it, it just depends. So if you know if it's something that you want to be by, we can show you where that is. If it's something you don't want to be around for whatever reason, you can totally be insulated away from it and be in some place where you don't ever see it. Um, and you know the tourism stuff. You know, it's Portland's going to do anything they can to draw people in here. I'm sure you know there's probably some weed tourism. Um, for the most part, though. It is, it is kind of a myth, I think, because it's just not something most people see, um, other than if you do live in an area where, you know, you live by one of those, those weed shops. Yeah, I mean, and I would say, too, it's, it's not something that, that most people even do or think about either. Maybe there's a little bit of a reputation around that, but it's, it's probably a, a pretty small subset of the culture, I'd say. Yeah, it's probably not something that, I don't know if you noticed a shift or felt a shift, but uh, it's not something that... When it got legalized, you really noticed a difference. In, in other words, you didn't like see people everywhere smoking weed all of a sudden once it was legalized. You just you saw you saw the shops, um, you know, here and there. And then again, some places you don't see them at all. So uh, it it really didn't change a whole lot once it became legal. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's a myth, probably labeling Oregon or Portland as kind of like a stoner or a pot smoking uh, place. It's probably not a whole lot different than most areas. Kind of yeah. like the weird thing. It's probably not a whole lot different than most big cities. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Next on the list, how about what 
So Portland's also known for strip clubs. You know, again, if, you, if you're kind of doing some research, looking about kind of cool or unique things about Portland, it's, it's probably going to come up at some point that Portland has more strip clubs per capita than anywhere else in the country. And I've, I've heard that for one for a long time. I yeah. think that's like a long standing, like a long running thing for whatever reason, right. wh wh whatever that is. But that's been a thing that you kind of hear for, for, you know, for a long time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, the myth being that everywhere you go, no matter where you live, there's going to be a strip club on every corner. I mean, would <laughs> you say that's the case? It's kind of like the weed thing. I mean, sometimes you 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 might not see any strip clubs for a long period. You'd ha you'd have to go searching for them to to find them. And then some some places um, you can definitely find them too. You know, m maybe and maybe this has to do with kind of the culture and Portland being a very accepting place. You know, uh, maybe Portland just kind of you know celebrates the the art of nude dancing. You know, more than some places in the country. Um, I you know I don't know. But it's not something that uh, uh, you and your group of friends are going to go out and you know start doing once you uh, <laughs> once you move here, or yeah. it's not going to be something that's kind of in your face or something that you see everywhere right. all the time. Um, it's not part of the culture, really. I mean, I think for most people, yeah, why, uh, which is why it's a myth. Yeah, maybe if anything, it's just kind of a funny stat about Portland. Yeah, um, right. You know, one of the things that makes it a little bit quirky. Yeah, quirky or, or unique. Yeah. All right, bonus one, um, culture. I don't, know, I don't know if there's a specific uh, myth for culture, but maybe some myths around culture. Yeah, you, I, I think you, you hear a lot, and, and we, we may have alluded to some of this, um, you know, and, and some of the other things that we were talking about, like, you know, there, there's a lot of hipsters, or, you know, we talked about, for example, there being some rioting going on, you know, and that everybody's in, involved in that, or even involved politically, um, you know, at all. Um, you know, there, there's kind of a reputation for um, Portland being kind of a hippie place, and everyone eats vegan, and does yoga, and meditates every day. And in and of itself, because there are so many of those stereotypes about Portland, that kind of shows you how diverse of a culture we have. Really kind of any of those things, you know, that, that we listed are things that you could probably kind of get involved with although I wouldn't encourage anyone to uh, you know to to go out uh, writing um, obviously but uh, <laughs> um, but you know beyond that you know I, I think you know and, and especially like in in more recent years Portland's become a much bigger tech city you know we've been kind of known as the silicon forest for a long time but you know a lot of tech companies uh, have been moving to or being founded and growing uh, in the portland metro area and there's kind of a you know tech culture dare i say tech bro culture um, you know a little bit so a lot of these kind of stereotypes that you see about kind of the people and the culture of Portland you know like I mentioned earlier in the video there might be a sliver of truth to every stereotype to some degree there also is a very you know kind of diverse there's a lot of diversity you know when you look at all of these kind of different groups and cultures you know that you could plug yourself into yeah, I think it kind of like you pointed out, there's some, um, maybe m more than myths, there's just some, some contradictions there. Like, sure. Like, uh, you know, Portland is very liberal, and most people would probably agree with that, but at the same time, you hear some people say it's filled with, you know, right-wing extremists. You know, both things are probably not exactly going to be true at once, or kind of like Paul's saying, there's going to be a, a sliver of truth to that, and the truth probably lies more in the middle, where it's, uh, it's there's just probably more moderate people here. Um, and, and that's probably kind of more the big myth is, is there, there probably is a little bit more culture um, and the fact that there are so many groups and there's so many misconceptions like it's all hippies um, or all, it's all this group of people or it's all that group of people. I mean, that, that sort of uh, makes it evident that, that there, is, there is actually um, some different culture here. And there, there's some great pockets of Portland too that, that you have a lot of culture too. And I think one of the great parts about culture and that you see in Portland is uh, we have a great diversity of food. You know, Portland is one of the best food places probably in the country. And, you know, that comes through kind of a, a diversity of culture, having a lot of different types of people that are making different types of food. So I think it's maybe that's maybe there's some contradictions there uh, more so than anything. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if you're moving here, you know, th there's not going to be any reason for you to uh, have to think that, you know, you have to change your lifestyle at all. Um, and, and I think, be, you know, because we have all of these kind of, you know, different stereotypes, different groups about kind of who lives here, but that just kind of shows you how welcoming and accepting, you know, uh, Portland and the Portland metro area does tend to be. Yeah, um, that's a good you know, point. And if, if you want to come here and, you know, uh, make your own kombucha, <laughs> great. You know, that, that's great. Uh, uh, share it with your friends. You know, we, we love it. 
you know, maybe just to uh, kind of reiterate that point, I think, you know, if you're moving to the Portland area, you know, maybe it is because of some of this kind of quirkiness and some of these different lifestyles and things that Portland is, you know, accepting of and, and you know, welcoming of. But again, you know, it, it's not going to be the case where, you know, you're not going to fit in. I think anybody could fit in here, um, yeah, you know, and, sure. and there's all kinds of activities, lifestyles, you know, things that you can plug right into. Well, I think that's about it, yeah. Um, hey, here's here's one for you. To kind of piggyback off the Portland, Oregon thing is like weird, um, the culture thing. And I've maybe asked you this question before, but um, would you say that uh, people from Oregon have an accent? And before you answer this, you know, <laughs> one, one reason why I asked this question, you know, I've, I've heard people kind of debate this before, and I, I think we could probably all agree, like, hey, people in the Northeast have an accent. Sure. Right? They have, People in the South have an accent. There's even people in California, like the Valley, the, like the surfer type of accent, right? You mean California? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, you know, you could find you could Sorry, say Sorry, Californians. This and, right. It, <laughs> but you don't really hear people like identify or talk too much about an accent from Oregon. And if you look at English-speaking countries, I mean, you're talking Australia to Ireland to you know to, to England um, to Ontario, Canada. All of these places that, you know, speak English kind of have their own kind of little accent. And, you know, I've kind of heard people before, like, talk about, like, do people from Oregon um, have accents? And I know you had that one person that reached out to you that one time from one of our videos that, I don't know if they said you had an accent, but they liked your voice. Well, <laughs> I, I think, and to answer your question, uh, and maybe, you know, maybe we do have an accent, maybe this is an accent, but I think basically we have no accent here. So maybe that in and of itself is one. Um, right. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah, I have family in Seattle, for example, and you know, you, you would say Portland and Seattle, the Pacific Northwest, you know, very similar, but yeah. I've even heard, you know, people who, you know, ha have, you know, grown up uh, in Seattle or even a little bit North, they have like a very slight Canadian accent, you mm -hmm. know, and they're a couple hours away from Canada. Right. So, you know, With that BC seeping in there. Yeah. May maybe that's why I I'm, I'm not sure, but, um, yeah. I, I don't know. I've always thought of it as we have just a complete lack of an accent. Um, and, you know, may, again, maybe that is just our accent. I, I'm, I'm not sure. One thing I have noticed growing up here, uh, and I don't know, maybe you agree, but if you get into some more rural areas uh, of Oregon, um, there there actually is a little bit of like a drawl. Like, yeah. not like a southern I, accent, yeah, but yeah. there's like a rural accent in Oregon. There's a rural Oregon accent, yeah. You know, and that's, um, I, I've seen that with you know, people from out east, you know, way out in eastern Oregon mm -hmm. or southern Oregon as well. Yeah, me um, too. So I guess uh, the jury's out. So it almost feels like people in Portland are like the only ones in the world that don't have an accent. You know, another way you can think about this is that can you identify somebody based on just listening to them? You know, talk to somebody on the phone from New York, from Massachusetts, from Ontario, or even Wisconsin or Minnesota. You know, you can hear the, like the, the pronunciations, you can identify the accents. I don't know if people can identify um, the Portland accent, but uh, just some food for thought and yeah. being weird. And hey, let us know in the comments. Yeah, uh, if, tell us what you think. If we, uh, if we have a, an Oregon accent, <laughs> uh, we'd, lo we'd love to hear some feedback there. Yeah. Um, so if you're moving to the Portland area, if you're relocating to Oregon, um, get in touch with us. You know, we, we would love to talk to you more about your home search. Um, you can actually click the link below in the description of this video and schedule a Zoom call with us. We can chat 20, 30 minutes, talk about your scenario, what you're looking for, what's going to fit you best, um, or give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email. Um, either way, we would love to help. And if this video is helpful, hit the like button. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell to get notified when we drop a new video, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. <laughs>